All right, guys, let, let's check this out for level scaling, okay? Monster level scaling in Diablo 4 is a feature that adjusts levels of enemies, matches the player's level. Make sure the game remains challenging as players progress through it. The system aims to promote exploration and prevent players from feeling discouraged from exploring lower level areas. With this feature, players of different levels and power can come together in an open world, which is why developers are testing different levels of level scaling, different versions. Although more testing is needed, Diablo 4 final release will most likely have monster level scaling as stated by David Kim, the former Diablo 4 principal of the game. Additionally, experience is gained zone wide in parties and players can benefit from the group buff that gives the bonus experience. So we're still going to have the group buff experience. So if that's in there, then I would assume we're going to get the same amount we did in the beta, which was up to 30% in a full party. When players are close to each other with these features, players can team up and battle enemies together, ensuring a more enjoyable gameplay experience. In the past, players would often avoid low-level areas once they have progressed to higher levels as enemies in the areas uh, would be too weak or worthwhile rewards, which is true. However, players can revisit these areas and still find enemies challenging enemies that appropriate for their level. This helps to keep the game fresh and engaging for longer. Okay. So furthermore, group the group buff mechanic in Diablo 4 incentivizes players to team up and work together. The bonus, bonus experience is that when players are close to one another, encourages them to stick together. So monster level floors in Diablo. So it's not actually zone based. It's still based on your character level. In Diablo 4, endgame areas have monster level floors, which means that players' character level is, uh, which means if a player's character level is beneath the floor, the area becomes much harder to progress through, according to David Kim, the former Diablo. Yep. The game has level scaling, but it's not completely fixed level scaling. Instead, some areas are more difficult and have a set level which will, with, that they always remain until the player reaches a certain level. This feature ensures that players don't venture into areas that are too challenging for their current level and helps them prepare accordingly. To further assist players, Diablo 4's map will display easier areas in green and harder areas in red. This will allow players to determine if an area is too difficult to handle on their own if they, or if they need to team up to progress. This feature has been seen in other games like World of Warcraft, which we just discussed uh, earlier and made it tough. So this is so that this is this is like that. So in the open world, you're going to have monster scaling based on your character level, which is very good, according to this and David Kim. But once you get into monster level floors in Diablo in the end game areas, ergo nightmare dungeons, for example, right? This is where the the levels will be set, meaning it's like dungeon level 50. I'd say and if I have a brand new level one character and I take you in there right it's going to show red because that's too hard but you're with me so the character like we should be able to progress through that um because they said you can team up and do that right and it's been seen in other areas like World of Warcraft similar to that you would take a, uh you know I'm a level 50 character I take you to a level 40 area or a level 40 nightmare dungeon for example and then I fight while you're close enough to gain the EXP, and then you power level up. So it seems like we're going to be able to do this in those end game areas, right? I really like that we still have the, uh, the like bonus EXP. So they grant uh, a lot of EXP, which is determined by the monster's level and size. At least on the other hand, provide a fixed amount of XP, regardless of monster type, which are valuable targets, right? Side quests and events scale up their rewards, ensuring players that they're appropriated for their rewards for their efforts. Farming, however, farming high level zones can be effective unless players can defeat enemies at a comparable pace to the monsters of their own level. Diablo 4 scaling pros and cons. Level scaling has its advantages and disadvantages. On one hand, it ensures that you never out level dungeons or quests. This is good. Uh, and then on the other hand, it takes away from the sense of progression that comes with leveling up. Areas that were once challenging remain equally difficult, which may not feel as satisfying. Grinding won't necessarily make a difference either uh, as you get more running existing content. However, the gear is subject to RNG, which means that you're farming that and that's just fine. 
So in Diablo 4 for the scaling mechanic, it's advan uh, advantageous to group up. So they definitely definitely like encourage it to do it with similar power levels. The number of and the number of players in a party doesn't affect the life and damage done by monsters. That's good news. Uh, by monsters in the open world, but it does affect the life and damage of monsters in dungeons, which have a maximum of four players. So you can have a party up to four, and then they get stronger. That's fine. Uh, so your world state and quest progression depend on the party leader. Once you join the party, your progression is set to that party leader's progress. So that's interesting. Uh, it has its pros and cons. So what it looks like, guys, is basically when we come to power leveling, or what I think power leveling may, may do, is I really like this. So in the open world, everything is based, characters or monsters levels in EXP is based on your character level. I think that's great, right? So when you're experiencing the game, it's, it's your level. It's fine. That way your, your progression is very good. Now, once we get to end game and we're doing dungeons and we want to power level other characters by doing the monster level floors, this is where you do it, which ergo would mean that like doing quests, side quests and the tree of whispers may not be the best way because additionally, there are bonus penalties for defeating. Wait, wait. Additionally, there, is, there are bonuses and penalties for defeating monsters above or below a player's level. As a player levels up, zones of monsters level up with them to keep fights challenging. Side quests and events also scale up their rewards, ensuring that players are appropriately rewarded for their efforts. However, farming high level zones can be ineffective unless players can defeat enemies at a comparable pace close to their own level. So to me, what that means is that like doing like side quests or tree of whispers, your rewards and EXP is only going to be based on your level, which is good. But as far as power leveling, the best way is to go into dungeons. So I, I, I'm doing a nightmare dungeon or a dungeon in the end game. I bring a brand new characters in or like low level characters, and it's going to be too high for you. So you're going to get more rewards and more EXP. So dungeons and nightmare dungeons are going to be the best way to power level characters because in the open world of side quests and tree of whispers, you're only going to get EXP based on what your character level is and your rewards are going to be the same level scaling and party play. According to Pi Piora monster level, will scale uh, dynamically for each player in the party. That being said, certain zones will have certain level floors. For example, if a zone had a level floor of 25 and a level 10 player would encounter monsters on level 25, while their level 40 friend would fight against level 40 monsters. Right, so yeah, this is, this is amazing. This is great for power leveling. So you take somebody into a floor and if they're a level 10 player and the floor level is 25 to 40, then they're fighting against like the experience they gain is from a level 25 monster, which helps them power level up while me as the level 40 friend fights against level 40 mobs. This is huge. This is this. So this is the way you, you this is how you power level. This is how you power level 100%. But when it comes to power leveling, this is very, very good. This is very good. Because like I said, if I'm level 70 and I bring you to a level 50 floor and you're level 10, imagine how much EXP you're going to be gaining. Because if I'm level 70 and we're doing a level 50 floor, I'm just going to crush those monsters. As far as as far as power leveling, it that is definitely the way. 100%. This, this is huge. I love this. This is great. Yep. That, that's amazing. Okay, cool.